Well, well good morning, everybody, and welcome to uh, day two of DigiFest 2019. Hope you had a good day yesterday if you were here. Uh, if it's your first, uh, first bit of the conference, uh, welcome to today. So what you've just seen uh, behind you is a quick exploration of some of the challenges and the opportunities that we all face, and it's been one of the themes uh, for the conference so far uh, this year. Uh, yesterday, we had some really inspiring speakers uh, throughout the day, both on this stage and in some of the rooms uh, around the hall. And today, we're hoping that some of the workshops and uh, the, the case studies and the work you're going to do around the conference today will take some of those challenging ideas and turn them into opportunities for solutions and ways to tackle some of those challenges that we all face. But first, I'm going to introduce you to our keynote speaker this morning. And uh, it's my real pleasure to introduce Joycey John this morning. And uh, I think without further ado, I'm going to invite Joycey to the stage and to make a presentation to you. Thanks, John. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. My name is Joycey John, and I lead Nesta's work in education. And I'm really delighted to be here today. So let me start off by asking you, how many of you are working in the field that you actually studied in university? Just a quick show of hands. Very few, less than 25%. How many of you are actually learning new skills, building new knowledge in your jobs? Almost 98, 99%. So our education or our learning doesn't end when we leave university. And today I'm going to talk about a new vision for education, a vision that is about building broader skills, about making sure that it is fair and that the system itself is fit for the future. But before I do that, I wanted to share a personal story. When I was in school, I was very fortunate because my school introduced computing when I was 12 years old. And at high school and A-levels, I learned programming languages like BASIC, COBOL, Fortran, Pascal. Most of these languages are not used anymore. And when I went to university, it was about C and C++. So imagine you're learning lots of new languages and you feel like you're prepared with the programming skills you need to go out there and build solutions. But the reality is that when I first started my job, I didn't use any of those six or seven languages that I'd learned in school or university. I was working in finance, building pricing and risk management applications used by traders. And what did they use? Excel and VBA, Perl scripting, uh, getting data from the mainframe. Now, that just gives away my age. Uh, but in terms of the skills that are taught in universities and the skills that are needed to work, they're very different, and we all know that. So we, we need to be constantly building new skills. So this notion of multidisciplinary learning this notion of lifelong learning and work experience-based learning is really crucial. Now, before I talk about how are we going to build this new vision for education, which helps people build these skills and this knowledge that is required for the future economy, I wanted to just quickly tell you about Nestia. So Nestia is a global innovation foundation and we work in five priority areas, education being one of them. And we tackle the big challenges of our time by bringing bold ideas to life. And within education, the problem that we are trying to solve is how do we ensure that all learners can thrive in the future? And we do this through our cutting edge research, through grants and investments, by testing out new ideas, prototyping, and really convening and advising 
to make sure that we are changing and preparing all learners to thrive. So what does this really mean to have a vision for education that is broader, fairer, and smarter? In the next five years, we would have supported learners, education institutions, practitioners, and policymakers to really build a broader set of skills, knowledge, and capabilities, including things like creativity, collaboration, problem solving, alongside digital skills and social and emotional learning. We want to increase diversity and social mobility and expose learners to the diverse opportunities that are out there and really understand what works so that teachers, learners, and education institutions are making effective use of technology and data. So imagine that all students realize their potential through a broad range of skills rather than in narrowly defined exams. Imagine that businesses and governments are working together so that everyone has opportunities to learn and progress throughout their career. Imagine that teachers and learners are making the best use of technology and evidence to improve outcomes. This matters because we want a world that is inclusive, diverse, and equitable. But what are the barriers? What are the challenges that we face in education? First of all, there's a narrow curriculum, and what gets measured is what gets done. And even though employers have been crying out because of the skills gap, we all know that uh, London could face 66 billion shortfall by 2030 if we don't fix the digital skills gap. And the focus has been just on you know, how many new apprenticeship starts can we have rather than the real quality of these apprenticeships. So how can we make sure that we're not just preparing young people with English and maths, but also with the broader set of skills and knowledge that is required? The digital industry grew by 32% from 2010 to 2014. But there is not enough talented young people who can take up these jobs. And the gap is becoming worse when it comes to gender diversity. And with the rise of artificial intelligence and digitalization, this situation is becoming worse. Because the people who are writing the algorithms come from a very narrow section of society. And if girls and those from disadvantaged backgrounds are not participating in this, then we do have a problem. Governments are trying to understand the impact of AI and automation and how the education system needs to change. Secondly, tech is often seen as an add-on rather than as a fundamental way to do things better, more effectively, cheaper, or faster. And it's not just that tech is taken as an add-on. There are also other challenges around mental health, stress, anxiety. And because of these challenges, teachers are leaving the profession. Young people are suffering from mental health challenges. So what can we do to not only boost productivity, but also to improve well-being? So we've looked at the current challenges. But Nesta has also looked towards the future and looked at what are the challenges that are going to be there for employers in 2030 with the rise in automation and the underutilization of skills there's a real need to understand what skills will be needed and how can we adapt to these different business models that are building and that are coming up So we talked about, and you just saw the video as well, about Education 4.0. How do we prepare young people for this education revolution? We need to build on the strengths that UK has, the excellent higher education research capability, and we are well known worldwide for the excellent research that happens. But how do we ensure that it is spread across and we're really using the power of AI, 
virtual reality, augmented reality, blockchain, and other new technologies to really not only build the capabilities, but also use the tools that are needed to reshape education. Now, there's a real opportunity here to link creativity with subject knowledge, with programming or STEM subjects. Because to solve the big problems that the world faces, we need the interdisciplinary nature. And we need to break away from the silos of arts and humanities versus science and engineering. So having looked at what are the challenges now and in the future and what needs to change, let's talk about what are the skills that are needed for young people to succeed in the labor market. Nesta has done a lot of research in this space with uh, Pearson and academics from Oxford to look at what jobs are going to see an increase in demand and what's going to be um, decreasing in demand. So 10% of jobs will see an increase and 20% will see a decrease in demand. But the middle 70% is highly uncertain. And we can shape what happens by making sure that we're building the right skills and right capabilities. So these are some of the top eight skills that will be important in the future. And what we found was that a broad range of knowledge and skills will be needed. Things like judgment and decision making, fluency of ideas, active learning, systems thinking, problem solving. But we need to ask ourselves, is our education system teaching these skills? So let's look at another analysis that we've done. Everyone talks about digital skills, but not all digital skills are equal. And on this graph, you'll see uh, the probability of growth for professions or occupations. And on the y-axis, you'll see the digital intensity of those jobs. So some of the professions like chef or educa educators or catering managers, they will see an increase in demand in the future, but they are not as digitally intense. Whereas uh, as we are planning for what skills should we be building, we need to make sure that we are building the right skills, things that are not going to get automated away, things that require creativity, critical thinking, collaboration. So let's look at what are some tools, some practical things that universities and FE colleges can use to prepare students for a changing world. So we've been trying to make sense of skills and trying to build a UK skills taxonomy that is truly accurate and real time. We've published the first version of a prototype skills map, which basically helps learners understand what occupations are out there, what skills are needed, how technology heavy those occupations are, and what are some other occupations that are similar to the occupations that they are interested in. So this not only broadens their horizons, but also helps them understand what are the key skills that will be needed for the kind of things that they want to work in. And this is the view of the skills taxonomy that I was referring to. It's a tree-like structure with three levels. And this basically helps you understand within these six broad categories, what are the different jobs and what are the skills that are demanded for each of those clusters. Here you see an example for data engineering what are the key skills, what are the job titles, and what are the salary ranges. So let's drill down a bit more into the final layer to look at what is the information that it provides. So what is the value of skills? Uh, it shows you not only the range, but also the median salary for different jobs within categories. So what is the value of this skills taxonomy, something that is automated? And we're using artificial intelligence to build this rather than expert advice on what the skills taxonomy should be. 
So this gives a more real-time view by looking at 41 million job AdWords. And it helps people understand the value of the skills that they are building. So having a better understanding of the skills is not enough. We do need to help train and upskill people. And Nesta is doing quite a lot of work with policymakers on looking at what are the things that are needed to build these skills. So we need to anticipate the skills that are needed and then serve the diverse needs in different contexts and really build a resilient labor market and promote the services that tap into the intrinsic motivations. Because how many times have you signed on to an online course and not completed it? Because it's not just about having access to digital content, it's about how do you make sure that the right culture of learning is in place, that people are motivated and they take time um, and spend the money if needed to build these new skills. So here I wanted to just give you a few examples of some of the tools that Nesta has invested in or provided grants to, to test ideas to address some of these key challenges. So My Kind of Future is one of those tools where we are connecting disadvantaged young people to potential job opportunities through a mobile platform and it helps with creating that social capital. Now, not only do they get peer-to-peer -peer support, but also access to potential opportunities, whether it's through internships or jobs. And this was something we funded as part of the Inclusive Economy Partnership with government, businesses, and the third sector. Get My First Job is a platform that we have invested in to not only deliver financial returns, but also the social impact. And this addresses a key problem where a lot of young people are not able to get access to their to quality internships or apprenticeships or training opportunities. And Get My First Job has gone on to serve more than a million young people with education, apprenticeship training opportunities. WorkFinder is another solution that got a grant through our uh, Inclusive Economy Partnership where young people need these encounters with business. It's not just about looking for jobs or apprenticeships after um, you've completed your degree or your vocational education. How can you make sure that when you're in school or uh, when you're looking for these work opportunities, how do you find work in the local area or how do you get work placements so that you are understanding how the, the work environment is evolving. And by connecting with employers, young people are able to understand how the world of work is changing and what skills they really need to build. We've talked a lot about AI and you'll hear that again throughout the day, I think. The world is being changed by AI, but the question we are asking ourselves is, who is changing AI? And uh, last week was International Women's Day, and we published a piece of research looking at 12 inspiring role models who are shaping AI, fighting the sexism and the bias that exists. And we've made some recommendations as part of that storytelling. Uh, the three key things are we need to have multidisciplinary learning and break down the silos between humanities and sciences. We need to make sure that we are supporting role models as well as parents and businesses to help build confidence in young people, especially girls and those from disadvantaged backgrounds. We also need to build opportunities for young people to build skills in maths, in science, in AI, in programming, and apply that to real-world context that links it back to their passions. So it's not just the research that we are doing, we are also investing in tools that are helping fight some of the bias. And Be Applied is a platform that we've invested in. 
This came out of uh, the nudge unit where we are looking at behavioral change. And this tool helps people hire based on the, the skills and the capabilities rather than the name, the gender, where they studied, or um, what or who they know. Because the sad reality is that even today, a lot of biases still exist in society. And tools can help us address some of those biases. This is another piece of research that we've done, uh, looking at what is the future of AI in education. Already lots of schools, colleges, and universities are using AI solutions from, and these range from learner-facing tools to teacher-facing tools to system-facing tools. Things that can not only personalize learning, but also improve assessments so that mo there's more real-time feedback uh, and teachers can improve their practice as well. But also at the system level, helping to identify which, which schools need support or which universities need further support. So this is a really interesting piece of research. And if you're interested in understanding what the, f what the current state of AI in education looks like and what the future is, I highly recommend um, you read this report. Here's another platform that we've invested in, uh, which is personalized learning for uh, young people, but also helping teachers in universities customize the curriculum. And it uses an intelligent algorithm and makes sure that people are assigned the right assignments and the right content. So another platform that universities can use. So you've seen a lot of research around A, what are the skills that are needed? B, what are some of the tools that universities and colleges can use to build these skills? So first of all, it starts with awareness. It starts with understanding how the world of work is changing and how the demands from business are evolving. We believe that skills for the future, especially things like creativity, collaboration, problem solving, can be better developed so all learners can thrive. And we want to make sure that we are building towards that vision of an education system that is broader, fairer, and smarter. It is a tough journey, but a journey that is going to provide more autonomy and personalization for learners with a better mix of skills and knowledge and work experience, and really using technology and evidence to improve assessments and driving how young people are taught and how learners are building capabilities to solve problems. It's about fostering diversity in STEM, or as we call it, STEAM, and attracting minorities and underrepresented groups to be part of the solution. So they are shaping the future. And it's about using real-time data to make better career choices. And that these tools, some of the tools that I talked about earlier, can be used not just by learners, but also by career advisors, by parents and teachers to ensure that we are preparing learners for better careers and better destinations. So I believe that it is up to all of us as parents, as teachers, as policymakers, as leaders in education institutions to ensure that we are using the true potential of technology to build a broader, fairer, and smarter education. Thank you.